Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing RRR. This film was directed by S.S. Rajamuli. Rajamuli is an Indian filmmaker who has really hit the jackpot here with this film, um, and it's currently on Netflix, and it's starting to gain traction with Western audiences, and I think uh, for good reason. This movie was just a lot of fun to me. I, it gave me that feeling of where you're very high on life, just that buzz of energy. And, uh, you know, I've seen a few movies this year, and a lot of people have claimed certain movies are very thrilling or gritty or intense, and uh, I don't always share that sentiment. But as I watched this film, and pretty early on, I kind of thought to myself, yes, this this is more kind of what I'm talking about. This is probably the most fun I've had uh, watching a film this year. This is a Tollywood film. It's an action-adventure fantasy, and uh, it's a very unique blend of uh, a lot of American pulp entertainment elements and, of course, you know, Indian cinematic influences, obviously. I really enjoy the film because of just how much it ramps up the, uh, the absurdism to 11, and yet for the most part it's still very in control of what it's doing. Uh, it's a very bombastic piece of filmmaking, very, very over the top, and it wears kind of that pride of liberation very close to the chest. But it also has that balls to the wall action vigor that I feel like we don't get. Or it's not very tangible in, in American films anymore. The problem with all these big blockbuster movies, especially the big uh, modern American films is, is often the pacing for me, but not only that, it's how they build their, their big sequences. You know, typically if you're going to have a big battle sequence or, or, you know, a climactic sequence of some sort, you really need to orient the audience in the world, in the situation. Like if there's a party sequence and there's going to be a bomb that goes off in the middle of it, well, we need to know which characters are important to the situation. We need to know what they're doing, how they're constantly moving up until the bomb goes off. We need to know where the exits are. All of these things are very important. You need to implement them, I think, in a way that is seamless and doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Not only does it give us clarity and just cohesion of, you know, what's going on in the scene, but it also, it emotionally invests us in the scene. It keeps us rooted in everything in a way where we are part of the experience. And it just feels like this movie did it pretty well. And the story is just very high stakes consistently throughout, so it keeps you very much on your toes. And whether it's a set piece that involves like an escape or it's a, a dance sequence, a riot maybe, or um, like a, a fight sequence. All of it is very rooted in the emotion and always it's very clear. And today it just feels like there's a lot of monotony in movies where we're placed just right in the middle of a tsunami and we have no idea which way uh, is up and there's just no cohesion to the sequences anymore. And I don't know, I just, I found this refreshing. And I do like the simplicity of this film. I found that uh, to be refreshing as well because it is, it is quite surface level and you've got you know practically like mustache twirling villains here uh, in the British government um, and it's not exactly the most emotionally complex nor is it very psychologically uh, curious when it comes to like war and politics and love which are you know a lot of the central themes of the story because that thrill-seeking spirit is so integral to to the uh, core of the story, it just, it really transported me. Colors pop naturally, and uh, there is kind of a cartoony lightness to it, but there's also a gritty type of adrenaline. It has a, definitely has a warrior spirit, and that was kind of what I was the most drawn to. And this is an action-adventure film, as I've been saying, but it's also a, a you know, it's a three-hour epic. It's like a fable melodrama, and uh, it is about India before it gained independence from the British government. And in order to depict that history in an emotional way, it's honing in on, on something specific. So you have very intimate situations here going on uh, within all of that. That's going to connect the audience to it. And I love that we have a, a great friendship here, or as they say, a bromance uh, at the center of it, rather than a uh, a, a romance. That's more of the natural inclination, I think. And I, I don't know, it's re very refreshing to me because I feel like we don't see a lot of that very much. We don't see friendships glorified on screen the way we do romance. And the characters are so likable. It's the loyalty that they have and, and the gusto with which they, they throw themselves into all kinds of different situations and the genuine love that they have for each other with no shame. Um, it's just very sweet. It's very genuine. Because of that, this film, even though it's three hours long, it doesn't feel uh, that long to me. And weaknesses that would normally be very grating to me, uh, I can kind of forgive them here. I just love the very bold stance it has. It's like a karate stance where it is staring the audience directly in the eyes uh, from the very beginning and it's it's unrelenting in that and you get a sense that it's going to be a very high octane experience. It's like, I don't know, Mad Max mixed with Inglorious Bastards mixed with like uh, Busby Berkeley film and of course all of that wrapped up in the Eastern point of view and because it is very extroverted and, and very pointed, uh, it can be flexible in that. 
you know, it's got a lot of jarring tonal shifts, or it could seem very jarring in maybe a different type of film. It feels very believable. So when you have a guy charging towards a bunch of British people with a ton of zoo animals behind him, you don't scoff at it, you don't roll your eyes, you, you grin, or at least, at least I did. Yes, it's all completely ridiculous, and all of it is very removed from reality, but the motivations behind it, the emotion behind it, is perfectly relatable, I think, to, to most humans. One of my favorite scenes in the film is the big party sequence, kind of in the middle of the film. I just think it moves absolutely beautifully, and it has the same kind of vigor and a spastic kind of energy that I, I remember from like a great MGM musical from the 1950s. But it's also so aggressive that it feels almost like a fight scene, another fight scene that you might see in the actual film there. So again, it has that cohesion, and yet it has that that energy that reminds me of like the, the barnyard dance in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. But they're all very intertwined, as I said. The violence and the dancing both have a very vigorous kind of energy to it. And even like the singing compared to the physicality, they both have a very similar type of passion behind it. So that's where you can kind of create very abstract cinematic moments that, uh, that really gel together. So when something might be a little bit too brutal if it were a realistic situation or something really devastating, it can work in this situation. Because of the music and the dance and the color and all of that, it becomes a little bit more uh, complicated that way. Everything kind of undulates throughout. And because of the length of the film, I'm actually kind of surprised that it didn't get more weighed down by all the fanfare of everything. But you know, it has a very quick pace to it. Everything is surprisingly tight. It doesn't feel overstuffed, nor does it feel you know, really drawn out like it easily could have. Like I said, the emotion keeps building and every scene feels important. Everything has a process and a payoff. It is gripping in all of the right ways and it's just joyful. And I do recommend it for anybody that just wants to have a good time. It's just really nice seeing everything weave together, the music and the spirit and the drama and the Eastern mythology. And it's, it's all just popping on the screen in a way that's just, uh, really nice. It made me smile. And so yeah, I, I absolutely recommend this. But uh, that is my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website. As always, it is deepfocuslens.com. I am an artist. I do uh, commission portraits and I also sell prints of my work. If that is something that you guys are interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a commission or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who are amazing. Thank you guys so much for your support. And if you are interested in supporting the link for that is below as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.